Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's special installment of the VIB News Attack. This is the Yodeling Edition. Tonight, we'll be covering the April 22nd meeting of the Vallejo City Council, brought to you directly from the Townhouse Lounge in exciting downtown Vallejo. Tonight's broadcast is a joint production of the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com and OzCat Radio at 89.5 FM Vallejo. I'm here tonight with my sidekick, associate, sound girl, and yodeler, Ann Carr. Yeah, just hitting the high notes here tonight, very late tonight, and oh my God, it was a stamina test at City Council Chambers, a four-hour meeting. Oh my goodness. We survived another City Council meeting. It was a stamina tester tonight. Good gracious. Four hours of city council meeting with a barn burner of a topic around to have self-storage or to not have self-storage. Yes. Coming on the heels of, of last night's highly contentious meeting of the Vallejo Planning Commission. Right. With the mutiny among the pla- planning commissioners and the I, city staff. So. I thought, I mean, tonight was... was intense but last night it was like a chain link fence match almost it was one of those like i'm gonna take you and i'm gonna squeeze you through that mesh chain link and you're gonna go like a tomato to a cheese grater (laughs) oh you exaggerate they were they were mean and they were fierce but in the nicest possible way Uh, let's let's fill the folks in a little bit about what happened we uh had a proposed business park on sonoma boulevard a development which is always a good thing uh, but there's always a debate about, is it the right choice? And the big bone of contention was the the uh, desire on the part of the developer to put a self-storage unit as a big component facing and very visible on Sonoma Boulevard. The Planning Commission did not like the idea. They voted 6-1 opposing it. Right. So this is one of these things where uh, Vallejo, in my opinion, has uh, once again snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, We have an industrial slash business park in town. It's been there since the 1980s. It hasn't grown much. And since 2005, there was an amendment that was proposed by the city council to limit and exclude self-storage as a use from that business park. Um, but there is a property owner in the park who has plans for self-storage. At one point, it had been permitted, and their permit expired. Well, it, this, let's, uh, let's, let's say who it is. It's the Anthony family, and Jack Anthony and his siblings and so on that are involved in this development, and they have a, a car wash and a few other things around town. Um, and there was a lot of talk about... Um, you know, the the family and the good things the family has done it was interesting because it a lot of the discussion in the comments broke along the lines of people who sort of took the position of we know the Anthony's and they're good people and they should get what they want and other people who were maybe not so keen on the storage unit so it was a lot of I mean let's let's call it what it is it's sort of a little bit of, of some of the old Vallejo uh, against some of the newer uh, right. folks and it kind of did break along those those lines right to an so extent. there are a lot of people who know the Anthony family and they've been around for a long time and have had businesses here in Vallejo for a long time and that's all good um, the one thing I will say about their application f- to have a self-storage unit um, on that property which by the way in, entails a zoning change for the entire business park the, the, the arguments in favor of making that change was that at the time they bought the property, they were told they could do this. And at one time, they had a, a permit to be able to do that, but the recession intervened. But that permit expired. And they were noticed, they were notified in writing that that was no longer going to be an approved permit, and they were, were appealing that decision. So you could go both ways that, you know, yes, at one point that was permitted, but then um, that, that usage was um, going to be prohibited in the park. And it but, is. But Ann, <laughs> but Ann yes. we know they were appealing, but, but do you think the self storage thing is appealing? <laughs> no, no. Wait, wait, wait for it. 
<laughs> yeah. Now, I, I think the people who were against allowing self-storage in Vallejo's one and only business park raised good issues. And one of them is that the, the business park was supposed to be dedicated to generating jobs and revenue, and self-storage facilities do neither of those. Also, the location is, long, is prominent in one of the entrances to Vallejo, and it's not the most attractive thing. And so I think if you look at the forward-looking best and highest use of the property, self-storage is not it. And, and the thing that's very well, disappointing... Well, the argument, I'm just going to interject, yeah. the argument on the flip side is that the, the land has, has sat vacant for decades. Right. And uh, that some kind of development is better than no development. Right. That was one of the arguments. And I will say that Council Member Ducosta said her argument was that the market had spoken and that there were no other proposals coming forward. However, I don't believe that the market knows or has known that that parcel is sitting virtually on top of a node of a fiber optic system, which could make the marketing of the property completely different. And frankly, for the Anthony family, could maybe give them a higher value proposition for the property. So that that's the frustrating thing if you're looking forward and saying this is uh, Vallejo's really only unencumbered business park in the entire city that we are going to devote 3.9 acres of that to a business that's not going to employ very many people, generates no sales tax revenue, and very little property tax revenue. Right, and one of the things that was spoken about a lot were, uh, were jobs. One of the speakers uh, who uh, had a card, uh, Patricia Gatz, a Vallejo resident, uh, made the point we really need jobs in this town. Um, there were a number of different speakers. Uh, uh, Alex McDonald, who owns uh, Envelope Products Company, which is in the business park, uh, he's not in favor of the self-storage. Uh, he likes Vallejo, says it's a very good place to do business. Um, but um, he, his comment was, I don't really see how a storage facility benefits, benefits our business park. Uh, right. So you've got people that are actually uh, patrons of the business park, uh, that are not that are not in favor of it, right? So, you know, there were eight speakers who were in favor of the um, business park allowing self storage, and there were fourteen speakers against, including the basically six out of the seven planning commissioners who had evaluated this. And uh, you know, really, it's it's a matter of what's the best and highest use for Vallejo, and what does Vallejo want to be in the future, not what it has it been in the past. Right. And, and and again, I'm going to play devil's advocate, and and you know, because you you got up and spoke against it, so you made your your position known. But uh, there were people that that spoke about uh, our need to be business friendly, our need to be perceived as a, a a town that's welcoming to business, and also the point was brought up that uh, the Anthony's have been brought along a process and were led to believe by staff and by other um, entities that this would be an acceptable use and they felt that they were kind of uh, routed. Now the Planning Commission had voted 6-1 against, um, not against the whole project, but against metal skin self-storage unit. You've seen them, you know what they look like, you know. Right. Uh, yes on the park, but no on the self-storage. Uh, and there was, it was a very contentious item because city staff disagreed and made the opposite recommendation. And that became a big fight uh, at uh, uh, the previous uh, uh, planning commission where the, the recommendations that the commissioners made uh, was kind of pushed down and buried. Right. Yeah. Right. So there were really two issues that came up tonight vis-a-vis -vis the planning commission and this whole parcel. The one was the actual decision whether or not self-storage should be an allowed use for the business park property overall. And then the second issue that came up was really around the process with the Planning Commission and whether or not when they make a recommendation whether that is sent to City Council for review. And um, initially uh, it may have been sent in the 356 pages of the packet that went with the city council materials, but it was buried. It really wasn't clear what the planning commission um, stance had on this had been, and planning commissioners were up in arms about being ignored. And really, to a certain extent, that is the voice of the people. You know, the city staff has one perspective, and then planning commissioners are supposed to represent the public. Right, and Marv Kinney, who is a planning commissioner, and he's the city council liaison, spoke. Um, 
you know, he, he brought up some points, which is uh, one was that it, it does not provide the jobs. Uh, Self-storage, you know, you have one or two people working there, probably minimum wage jobs. So we're not talking about a lot of uh, a lot of jobs. Um, he also talked about this being a case of split zoning. Uh, which is really a no-no in, in planning. Right. Uh, Actually, he, I think it's called spot zoning. Spot zoning. And, I'm sorry, yeah. that's the word, spot right. zoning. Right. So, and that is allowing a use for this one parcel that really isn't allowed in the rest of the park. And so, you know, the, the council, unfortunately, did decide to vote to allow this, the zoning change that will allow self-storage in that parcel. I think they're missing an opportunity, and I think they're meddling the waters of uh, really creating a general plan that is cohesive, but that was the vote. Right. And Chamber of Commerce was there. Rich Cortola spoke in favor of it. And uh, ultimately, the final vote at the city council, um, we, we had Osby Davis voted in favors of, favor of it. Uh, Pippin Du Costa voted in favor of it. Jess Mulgapo, yes. And Roz Verder Aliga um, with McConnell, Meisner, and Sam Payan voting no. And it was interesting because it split. All of the jumpstart candidates voted for it, and all of the independent uh, council members or who had been independent candidates voted against it. So that was the breakdown and the split. Um, let's take a proclamation, declaration, and whatnot break. We had a bunch of proclamations, awards, etc. So right, we had five pro proclamations tonight, but let's talk about parties for a minute because one of the proclamations is a grand opening for the Central Latino and it was a long night. So let's just talk about a little party that's coming up Cinco de Mayo and um, uh, the Central Latino on Broadway is reopening and Barry's Bridals is having a reception for that and a grand opening celebration, Cinco de Mayo, 5 to 8 p.m. So the other proclamations, one other one was for Sergio's Crosswalk, which uh, was pedestrian safety signs and LEDs installed at Tennessee and Halliday Street and I think also at Broadway at Nebraska. I can't remember the other locations. And this came out of the very unfortunate situation where uh, Sergio Perlio lost his life um, in a traffic accident and his family commemorated him with uh, donating to the city and the city stepping up to match that donation. And the other big item was the budget. Uh, we had an informational item on the budget. It looks like we are going to see the first structurally balanced budget since 2004 in Vallejo, uh, which is... Uh, a step from the bankruptcy days. Right, it's a huge milestone, really. So the, the study session we had tonight on the bud budget is a look ahead, it was advisory only, of what the staff expects to bring for the 2014-2015 budget. And this would be a budget that would take effect as of July 2014. So right now they were just looking for input from city council in terms of priorities. They had made some recommendations around really the only area of budgetary discretion, which is around Measure B monies. And so they came forward and, and with for a bunch that, of recommendations. And for those that don't know, Measure B is the surcharge on our sales tax in Vallejo, which gives us the, the highest sales tax in Solano County. <laughs> right. So Measure B monies, they expect this year that that's going to be, if I... Recall co correctly, um, $13.4 million total. And so they are looking at proposals to sprinkle it around. Um, according to Councilmember Malgapo, if you add it all up, it looks like about 40% of that would be spent on public safety, according to the proposal put forward tonight by the city manager. Right. And we also had some discussion about the marina, the golf course, and participatory budgeting. Right. Uh, the mayor was pretty clear. He is not a fan of participatory budgeting. He brought up the expense involved in staff costs of three hundred and seventy-seven thousand uh, dollars, noting that that is larger than he would like to see. And at this point, they are going to put the participatory budgeting, which is having citizen involvement in how uh, monies are spent, uh, on hold for this budgeting cycle. Right, that was one of the biggest changes of last year's budget to the one that they're proposing for 2014-15, and that is that they would um, allocate no new project dollars for the next 
budgetary year, they would keep the staffing there to administer the grants from the previous years. And then they say that they plan to move participatory budgeting to an 18 month cycle instead of funding instead of every 12 months, which I think part of the risk and part of the concern with that is whether or not they'll actually follow through. And speaking of follow through, that's about all the time we have for this evening. So I'm ready to crawl into bed. And right. hit the sack. I don't know about you, Anne. Oh, my gosh. It's way past my bedtime. What I will say with all of these little meetings that we have or council talks is that for the real data, go to the web city website, download the documents. If you can stand to go through the video, watch it. We can't possibly give you all the details of a four-hour meeting in 15 minutes, and we're doing our best. And you can have fun reading those things and suffer like we do. <laughs> yes. Good night, Anne. <laughs> Good night.